Hello and welcome. My name's Mark Leavesley. I'm a professional paraglider pilot with over 30 years flying experience. I've flown all over the world doing competitions and teaching people to fly. In this series, I'm going to be showing you many of my hints and tips to help you have a better flying experience. I hope you enjoy. Hi guys, so episode two. What we've done is we've rigged the glider on a side of a hill now. So the wind is rushing through it just like we did in rigging in the wind part one. And we're going to move on now to connecting to the harness. This is really important. I want to go really slowly on this for you so you understand it. This is the way I connect to the harness, especially on a windy day. Um, I like to connect to the harness facing the paraglider. So if by any chance the wing does start to blow, I can see it happen and do something. Rather than connecting with my back to the glider, I can't see what's going to happen. And if it starts to inflate or blow, I could get dragged with one riser on, both risers on. So I personally always like to connect facing the paraglider. So I'm going to now show you what I do to connect to the carabiners. It's like this. Okay, so we bring the risers together. So we've got the A's on top, no twists. Face the wing and we're going to do a twist with the risers over to the right. A half a twist over to the right. And now we can connect. Make sure it's locked away, always. Do a good old check of those carabiners, make sure they've definitely locked. And connect and check. And that's it. So what we've got now, so what we've got now is the right riser coming off the right side of the harness on top of the left riser. So when we do the launch, I'm going to turn right and everything's squared away nicely. So that's all great. So now we're going to move on to taking the controls. Now this bit is what most students struggle with. So we've done the connection. Your pre-flight check is always to make sure that the right side is on top of the left side. That's a must. So when we launch, we turn right and we're squared away, ready to go. So that's your pre-flight check. So we're going to take the controls now, and again, I'll do it really slowly. So obviously, the right riser, the right brake, needs my right hand on it. So right hand comes over onto the inside of the riser and takes the brake. Job done. And my left hand just comes straight down the side of my body to my leg and takes the left brake. So I have the correct controls. Now we want to move around into the launch position because at the moment the glider is still in the rig position. If it's lightish wind, which it is today, you could just pull the brakes on. I tend to hold them above, above the sort of brake handle myself. That's sort of a, a habit I've had for many years, but whatever. Don't do the wrap thing, which we spoke about, because if the glider starts to do something, you, you could struggle with all the tension to undo the brakes. I've never bothered with this wrap thing. If you need more brake pressure or you need more rear riser pressure to keep the glider down because it's got windy, take the rear risers and just pull them to your hips and it's job done. You do not need any more than that. If that doesn't hold the glider down, it must be very, very windy and it's, it's not flyable. So if you, if you can't hold the glider under control like this, you can quickly go for the rear risers. The rear risers, by the way, are where the brakes attach. This is the rear riser. So you can quickly take the rear risers and just pull them to the front of your hips. You don't need any more than that. Possibly to here, but no more. If you pull more, if you bring them past your body, 
like this on a windy day, the trailing edge of the glider will launch and then the glider will sort of horseshoe inside out. Basically, it's too windy for you. So if you can't hold the glider by just holding the risers to the front of your hips, possibly slightly on the side of your hips, it's too windy. Okay, so we're all rigged. We've done our connection and we have the controls in our hands, the brakes. So we're now ready to maneuver into the launch position. So it's quite windy. So rather than just going on the brakes to make sure the wing stays planted and down and doesn't try and launch, I'm going to do what I said and I'm going to take the rear risers and now I'm going to walk slowly, not to the wing tip, but about 10 foot out from the wing tip and the wing will follow me around and then we'll have a wall like this. Rear risers to my hips. Keep them on your hips. Keep walking, keep walking. Okay. Now I'm in position with my back to the wind and I'm ready to launch, but obviously the wing looks a bit of a mess. So I always put my right foot forwards as a bit of a stay, just straightening your arms slightly while holding the rear risers and just a little bit of a, a rock shakes the wing open. That's if it's still windy and you're nervous. If it's not too windy and you're happy, you could just re release the rear riser so you're just still on the brakes and do the same thing. Just a little knock like that and then hit the brakes. But look, I, even now I've got quite a lot of brake on. So I would rather go to the rear risers and just pull them to my hips. And it won't go anywhere. If that's really fighting you, it's just because it's too windy for you. So my right foot's always forward. Got a nice wall and I'm ready to launch. So before I launch, what's really important is we want a nice square straight wall and we don't need the wall any bigger than that. You see people on, on hills standing like this, not holding the rear risers and they're like this thinking, oh, it's killing me, it's so hard to hold back. You do not need a wall that high. Just step to the wing and lower the wall. And again, if just the brakes aren't enough to keep it from bouncing, just go for the rear risers. And it will not bounce, it'll stay put. So now, if you look at the wall, it's slightly high to the right side. If I make it so it's really high, can you see the right side of my wall is higher than the left? So if I launch now, the right side will shoot towards you on the camera and the, and the launch will go wrong. So if I step to the high side, watch, just a bit of a step to the right side and it squares the wall. It's only a short step. If you step too far, now the left side is high. So always step to the high side before you launch. So if you look now, the left side is high. It's not worth launching. You've got to step to the high side to square the wall. Watch what happens when I walk left. I've gone too far, look, and now the right side is high. So just come back. There you go. And now we're square. Right foot forwards. I can turn my head and feel the wind on my ear and it feels good enough to launch. So I'm going to gently release the rear risers. Now if the wing starts to go before you're ready, just quickly take the rear risers again. So gently release them. Still on the controls. And now the wall's a bit high. We don't need it that high. I'll, because I've maneuvered back into position, I've, I've walked away from the wing and the wall has come high. So watch how short a step it is. Watch. Six inches. It's all you need to do. You don't walk miles to the wing. It's just a small step to lower the wall. The right side's a bit high, so I'm just going to step to it. If you start with a square wall, you've got such a much higher percentage of a chance of doing a good launch. Okay, so I'm ready to launch. I'm now going to take the A risers. So my right hand is going to take the right side of the riser and I'll show you, everybody holds them and grips them as if they're gonna arm wrestle. 
Just use your fingers. You do not need to stress this part. Watch. Right side, right hand, index finger. Left side, index finger. Gentle pull. Walk to the wing and release. And a bit of break at the top. Nice steady pull. You do not need to yank the glider into the sky. Nice, gentle, steady pull. So you could see now I've got a bit of brake on. If it starts to fall back, release the brakes. If it starts to shoot over my head, pull some brake. Like there, look, pull some brake on to stop it from going over my head. It's landing now, look, so I can walk back. Here it comes, here it comes, here it comes, brake. Release. So this is pitch control. We're just talking pitch control. So watch, it's hanging back. Here it comes forward, here it comes, brake. So if I make it start to land, uh, release brakes, it will come back, look, and then brake there and then release. We don't want it going behind us. So as it starts to go over our heads, make sure you apply a small amount of brake. Brake there, release. Brake there, release. Brake. Release. We want it to be at 12 o'clock. We don't want it to shoot behind us. If it starts to land like this, release the brakes and walk backward. Here it comes and then brake. If it starts to go down back to the ground, release the brakes. So now look, it's getting low. Release the brakes, walk back. Here it comes, here it comes, brake. It's falling back, release the brakes, walk back. It's falling back, the wind has slightly dropped. Down we go. We'll just do a few more of those, just talking about the pitch control and the brake input. So let's build another wall. Gentle nudges if you want to open the wing nice. Don't do anything drastically hard. Get a nice square wall. The wall's a bit high, so step to it. Look how small the step is. Look, too high. Look, one foot step. That's all it is. Okay, so we've stepped to the wing and we've lowered the wall. Still have the controls. Here goes the launch. Right side risers, right hand, fingertip. Left side risers, fingertip, straight arms, and a nice gentle pull. As the wing starts to come up, I'm going to walk to it slightly to take the power out. And then as it gets almost to the top, I will release the A's and a bit of brake just to stop it at the 12 o'clock position. So fingertip, fingertip, straight arms, foot forward, pull, Walk to it, release, and a bit of brake. So this is all pitch control. The forward and the back is all pitch control. So if you watch my hands, every time it starts to go back to the ground, I'll release the brakes. When it comes forward, I'll put a bit on. So watch it comes forward, look, brake. Break, 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 break till you feel it stop and then release. Okay, so here it comes. Break, 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 and gently release. So every time the wing starts to try and go over my head behind me, I'm hitting the brakes. I want it to stay above my head. So that's pitch control. So now we'll move on to roll control. And this is the bit that most students struggle with. So now, the simple way of understanding this, you shouldn't need to think right and left. It should become sort of intuitive. So what I do is when the wing falls one way, so I'm gonna make it fall this way, when the wing falls, I'll step under it while pulling the way I'm stepping. So let's make the wing fall this way. 
I'll make it fall, look. Here it goes. So now I'm going to walk under it while I'm pulling under it. And then it comes back. So now I'll make it fall this way. So it's low, so I'm walking under it while pulling under it. And back it comes. And vice versa, so this way. So walk under the low side while you're pulling. So you're pulling the way, the shoulder that's pulling is the way you're stepping. So I'm stepping left and I'm pulling left. So now it's falling right, so I'm stepping right while I'm pulling my right arm. See, just keep walking under it while pulling the right arm. So the way you step is the way you pull. And that's it. So now, if I, now it's windy, the wind's picked up strong now, so make sure you set your centre of gravity low. Keep low to the ground, because if there's a gust of wind now, all that's going to happen is it's going to take me to there. If I stand like this and there's a gust of wind, I'll end up taking off. So keep low, it's quite windy now. So with the wing's slightly low, look, step and pull the way you're stepping. So it's falling this way, so I'm running under it while I'm pulling the right, so I'm stepping right, pulling right. Stepping left, pulling left. And then when you've got it squared away, don't bother turning until it's dead square. So there we go, it's square, and then you can turn. And away you go. Let's go back to doing some more launches. So let's just land the wing, brakes on and walk to it. Whenever you land the wing, hit the brakes and also walk to the wing and you'll take the power out. Don't try and stand still and hit the brakes. Okay, so we're going to do another launch. So right foot forward. So the, the wall's a bit high. So I'm going to step slightly, look. Watch how small the step is. That's better, but look at my right side. It's not nice. So we take the right side A riser and we just gently, very gently, just give it gentle nudge and get ready to hit the brakes. Walk to it, the wall's gone a bit high again. Gently, very gently. It's all finesse, nothing has to be hard. Just relax. Just gently, take your time, there's no rush. Okay, that's good. Still got the brakes in my hands. I haven't let these go since I rigged and walked into position. So, right side is high again. So I'm going to take a step to the high side. And the wall is a little bit high, so I'm going to take a six inch step to the wall. Job done. Right hand. Right risers, finger. Left riser left finger, foot forward, pull, walk to the wing, walk to the wing, release and a bit of break. And if you can practice this and get good at this, the flying is the easy part. It's all about this. Once you've turned and now you're facing the wind, it's still the same. You've still got to control, control your pitch and your roll. So now if the, if the wing starts to fall to my left, you'll pull right while stepping left. You, whenever the wing falls, you must step under it while controlling the roll with the brakes. So if we make it fall to the left this way, it's falling left, look, so I'm stepping under it while I'm breaking it back to the right. Constantly flying the wing, constantly flying the pitch and the roll. It's not windy again now, it's eased off a little bit, so I can stand more upright. If it does get windy again, which it's bound to in a minute, I'll come down here and I'll get a little bit lower on my centre of gravity. Okay, I'm going to turn back now. So the way we rig, we always do that right, right twist. You can do it left if you're a left, it doesn't matter which way you do the twist. Just remember, if you do it right, like I showed you on the video, when you launch, you turn right. When you land, you go left. So now I'm back to that right twist now, the way we rigged. So it's low to the left, so step and pull. So it's low to the left, step and pull. So the way you're stepping under the low side is the arm you're pulling. Okay, I'm going to land it. 
So when you land it, it breaks on hard and walk to it, look, and it takes all the power out. Oh, walk back away from the bags. I'll do that again. So if I was going to launch now, again, if this happens, sometimes the wingtip will actually fully go across. Huh. Because it's a low end A wing, it's opened itself. But sometimes if you have the wing snake over and it actually goes into a, a cravat, on all paragliders, you have a line called a stabilo line. So if your wing has gone over and even by gently nudging the A's, it won't come out. If you look for the stabilo line on this glider, it's red. And if you take it at arm length and pull it and let it go, it will clear that problem. Okay. Okay, so if you're going to go for a launch and by any chance that the wing has flipped and gone into cravat position, like it has now, you can see the wing tips flopped over and it won't come out by pulling on the A's. On all paragliders, you have a stabilo line. It's the single coloured line, normally off the B's, and it's a different colour to the rest. That's the stabilo, that goes to the centre cord of your paraglider. If by touching the A's it won't clear, if you just take the stabilo line at arm length and give it a pull, watch what happens. Boom, you cleared, just like that. So on your paraglider, next time you open it, look on your B's, on your B risers, possibly the, the C, it depends what wing you're flying. If it's, an, if it's an A wing, it'll be on the B's. And if you look at the B's on this paraglider, it's the one that's a different color and it goes to the center cord of the wingtip. Okay. So here we go, it's got windy again, so I'm gonna do another launch. So here goes, I'm about to launch, my right foot's forward, I have the controls. I'm about to go for the A's, but look at the wall. It's high to the right. So here goes the step, and I want, you, I want to really overemphasize the step. Watch how small this step is, watch. It's that, it's probably the width of, of one of your feet. It's not far, if you, people do this. And now look what's happened, and because I've done a huge step. So if you do this sort of a step, it's just too far. It's just a small step, watch the wing, watch, watch, small step. It's job done. Okay, foot forward, right side. I know I keep going over this, but I sort of want you to get it. So right risers, fingertip, take the A. Left risers, A risers, fingertip, take the A. Here comes the pull, 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 walk to the wing, release and break. And then release the brake. Break if it starts to overfly. So, we're going to make the wing fall this way. So it's falling out of, out of sync, look. So we're gonna step under it while we're pulling the way we're stepping. And again, it's falling right. So I'm stepping under the low side and pulling my right arm, pulling the way I'm stepping. Here we go. It's falling, so I'm stepping and I'm pulling. Keep it on, keep it on, and back it comes. One more, fall this way. It's falling, so I'm stepping and I'm pulling. Hold it on, keep stepping, keep stepping, keep stepping. And there it is. And when you've got it nicely squared, you can turn, no stress, no rush. Take your time. And away you go. Okay, so to finish off episode two, I've shown you how to do the ground handling and the launch. Keep practicing that. One thing that used to scare me is when I get the wing back down on the ground, say I've just landed the wing and I'm in this position and I'm fighting it and I'm fighting it. I'm thinking, oh God, what's gonna happen here? It's windy. Get au fait with where those rear risers are. So you can quickly, once you've landed and turned and faced the wing, you can quickly go for the rears, like so, and pull them on your hips. Now, if you imagine you've had a lovely flight, but the wind has slightly picked up and you've landed, if I make it look windy, 
if I step back and don't hold too much rear riser on, just imagine now you've landed and you're thinking, oh, crikey, am I going to get this away? Because every time you try and rose the wing up, it starts to launch and you're fighting it. So this is what I do now. So I've landed, I've twisted around, I've took the rear risers and I've pulled them on. So that's all good. Forget popping the brakes on the poppers. Who cares? You just want to get this thing back under control. So I've got the rear risers on my hips. What I do here is, you've got to try and imagine it's very windy. I bring the left riser to my right hand while I've got them pulled on. So now all the pressure is still on, but it's just in my right hand, keeping it pull, pulled on. Don't take your time, get on with this. And then my left hand comes across all of the risers, both sides, nice and square. Make sure all the malons are together and square. And what I do now is the, the right hand can now release because it's got the left hand holding it. And what I do is I walk to a wing tip while I'm rosing. Because if I try and rose now, the wing could well start to launch. So what we want to do is we want to almost reverse the way we rigged. So what we'll do now is we'll walk to the wing tip while we're rosing. So I'm going to walk to that wing tip while I'm rosing. So it's like this, look. So forget the brakes, keep the pressure on, walk to the wing tip. So you're winding the wing off the wind. Forget the brakes, it doesn't matter because you've got all this rear riser on. So I've walked to this wing tip while I'm rosing it. So the wind is now coming from, from the camera to the glider. And just walk to the wing, rose it all the way in, bring it right the way to you. Still forget the brakes, who cares? You want to get this thing under control. When you get it here, just take this bit and just bring it over the top. So the wind now is rushing over this and it won't launch. I could honestly, I could just let this go now. So I'm, I'm, I'm making the wind work for me. So now you can pop the brakes on. One, always make sure you stow your brakes and make sure they follow the pulley and go on properly. Don't, don't be putting the way twisted. Otherwise, next time you come back to have a go, you're already in a knot. And that's that. So then what I can do is take the harness off in this position. Actually, I won't do it because I've got the microphone. Oh yeah, I can do it. So take the harness off. And now what I'm going to do, this tip I've pulled across, I'm just going to drop the harness across it there. And you can leave that to go for your lunch or whatever you want to have your break that will not fly now forget this doesn't matter as long as you pull that wing tip over to there it's happy days so i'm coming back to have another fly i've had an hour break so this is all you've got to do now you don't need to open the wing physically yourself bring the harness off step in Connect. Walk away slowly. So we're still side on to the wind. Risers are still the same. My right riser is still on top of the left. So take the controls like I showed you in C, uh, episode one. Also take the rear risers just to play safe. So I have the controls but the wing's an absolute mess, but it's windy. So now all you've got to do, watch, walk back around the way you come from. Keep walking till your back is back onto the wind, which is there. Right foot forwards, gently release the rear risers, well, don't release them, but straighten your arm. And then just a quick jolt backwards. And then hit the rear risers. Just a 
still a bit messy, that's okay. Just do another one. Hit the rear risers. Okay, right wing tip is a bit messy. So just take your finger for the right hand side A riser, little nudge. Take your time, no rush, it's windy and brakes. And we're all back to square one. Okay, so we've landed. We've hit the brakes, it's windy. Take the rear risers quickly, because you don't want to get dragged. Bring them to your right hand. So you've got all that pressure now on the right hand. Your left hand can now come across all of the malons. Hold them square and release your right hand. Rose the wing while walking to the wing tip. Walk to the wing tip while rosing. Keep pulling it in all the way to your, till it comes right up to your body here. Grab that part of the tip and just flip it over. And then stow the brakes. Make sure you stow the brakes. If you don't stow the brakes, you'll come back after your brake and you're in a, an absolute world of mess. We're trying to make these videos so you have an easier life. Stress-free. So just pop your brakes on. Happy days. Harness off. Step out. Lay the harness now on top of that little fold. Won't go anywhere. So I hope that's really helped you. Any questions, fire them at me and I'll reply. I, I reply to everybody. I'm not saying, as I've said on the other, the other video, the rigging in the wind, I'm not saying these are the best ways. My way is the best, but they work, they've worked for me for many, many years. Um, just try them. You might find someone else's video that's better. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter whose video it works for you. As long as you have safe flying and you're happy and confident. So cheers guys. And we'll do another one real soon. Bye. Click on this link to win a free Niviuk NCare bag and get bonus points by subscribing to my YouTube channel.